hopes. And then we get to worship in this way. Maybe it will make us appreciate having the opportunity to worship outside in person. Um, it'll increase our appreciation for that even more. But in the meantime, today is what it is. Let's worship the Lord. Blessed be our God, forever Amen. and ever. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. We will. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will we praise, praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. God. Our rock and refuge, keep us safe in your care and strengthen us with your grace, that we may pray to you faithfully and love one another boldly, following the example of Jesus, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city of heat, the fortified city a worm. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong people will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The songs of the ruthless were still. On the mountains, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples, a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strange clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. So I invite you to join me in reading, saying, praying Psalm 23, a favorite psalm of most people. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along bright pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Here ends the song. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, you Oda, and I urge Sintash to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the Book of Life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the peace of God will be with you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Saying, 
Tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized the slaves, and mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. The slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, and so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Just about in every culture, since the beginning of civilization, societies have considered marriages and marriage ceremonies sacred to the families. Wedding takes place at all levels of society. Celebration in the family delight all family members. Friends and relatives also attend the event to share the pleasure. Extravagant amount of money are spent on the ceremony and the reception. When I think of the wedding ceremony in the Bible, I think of the wedding feast in Cana in Galilee, which Jesus attended and how the wine ran out. And just Jesus had to intervene to rescue groom's family from shame. In this gospel reading this morning, our wedding banquet, Jesus uses a story that is quite familiar to the readers of this day. People also understood the caste system. They knew that the higher the participant's social rank, the more formal luxurious arrangement. In this case, it was royal wedding. The king held a wedding feast for his son. The king was nice. The party was about to get started. People don't show up. <laughs> the king sent out his servants to call the guests to come. They ignored his call. Once again, he sent other servants begging for the guests to come, but they refused the invitation. After several failed attempts, he sent his servants to tell the guests, Come to the wedding feast. The table is set. Come to the wedding feast. The king turns around as if nothing has happened and says to his servants, The wedding is ready, but the guests were not worthy. I do not know why someone would refuse to attend the wedding banquet of king's son. Naturally, people will fight and cloma to be at such an event, but not in this parable. Instead of heeding God's invitation, they do what they are good at doing. They created an attitude that they are busy or play either a deaf ear. Nobody comes. One gets off to his farm, another walks off to his business. Our world is shattered. We see evidence of this around us every day. In our communities, in the news headlines, in our hearts. As humans, our natural tendency is towards selfishness. Sometimes it's easy for us to point out the greed we see in others. But if we, 
we are honest, we can also see it in ourselves. We hurt others and reject God in our pursuit of self-sufficiency. Everyone is displayed from Jesus, who desire to have intimate relationship with each of us. At the wedding banquet, we may feel the emptiness in our heart and indescribable longing to be truly loved. We often try to fill this void within us with all kinds of behaviors and relationships. Some are healthy while others are harmful, but no one of them could fully and honestly serve his place. But this reading is full of surprises. As it was written in the prophet Isaiah, the king's ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. The surprise keeps coming. The king turns around almost as though nothing has happened and says to his servant, the wedding feast is ready, but the invited were not worth it. Go, therefore, into the ministry and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. In this parable, the king never gave up and he sent his servant out for the first time. And this is the third time he sent his servant to bring the people to the wedding feast. So these servants took to the streets and gathered all the evil and the good they found. The wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. Those who filled the wedding hall were not those who not on the original guest list and who have no reason to hope for a place at the banquet. It is about us sinners. In this parable, there are two groups of people who have been invited. The only thing that distinguishes the first invited guest from the second invited guest is their presence. The second invited guest showed up at the wedding banquet. The first invited guest did not. The wedding hall was filled with the second invited guest, but the first invited did not attend. That is the only difference between the two groups. The key to our life in God is to show up to be present, that's a lot easier said than done. Hmm. To be present is difficult work. Think about how difficult it is to be present to another person. That could mean establishing the other person as our priority and seeing them for who they are and not who we want them to be or think they should be. In other words, the vulnerability of entrusting and giving our life to others and bringing and offering all that we are and all that we have. If we do not do it with others, we may not do it with God. Instead, we often separate, we often go separate ways to our farms and business. We are so busy, so tired, so distracted, there is work to be done and money to be made. We make light of the other's life and what is being offered. We are convinced we have better things to take care of and better place to be. We all remember the story of Jesus' visit to the two sisters, Mary and Martha. Martha was so distracted by many things she had to do. What happened when Martha blamed her sister, Mary, to the Lord for not being helpful? What was the answer of the Lord to her? Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Like Martha, many of us miss such divine moments. 
in life because we are distracted and try to do everything to the fullest to gain others' approval. That's what the first invited group did. They did not realize, we sometimes do not realize that there is no life outside the banquet, the kingdom. Ultimately, like Martha, we will not only fail, but question affection of, affection of, question God's affection for us. Being present in the present is a Christian devotion, which uses every day things and events that encourage us to take advantage of every opportunity God brings into our life. Being present in present is a real gift. It is a gift we receive from our Father above and gift we can offer to those around us. To show up and be present is to be worthy before God. It could be that simple or it could be that difficult. We do not earn or prove our worthiness as a precondition for entering the banquet. We show up and be present and discover for ourselves the marriage that God has always been, God has always known about us. This parable is a reminder to us of who we are and what is in us brought in from the many spirits. Yet, he has graciously, lovingly, carefully made you worthy to be at his feast by his grace and his provision. Amen. Amen.
and their family. The unemployed, hungry, homeless, and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those in danger and in need, the sick and the suffering, prisoners, captives, and their families, the unemployed, hungry, homeless, and oppressed, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, as schools are open, keep them healthy and equipped to teach and learn. As schools are closed, feed those who are hungry and shelter students who have no place to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those working on a vaccine and a cure for the virus, inspire them towards your truth and make a vaccine that is safe and available to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. For those learning to be anti-racist, inspire them to reform the institutions that have held our brothers and sisters down for so long. We know all people are your children, just as we are. Please help us to understand how much they have contributed to the richness of our society and that they deserve to enjoy the bounties of this land as much as we do. We ask for this in God's name. Amen. Amen. For this community, especially those with October birthdays, Roz Mandel, Yvette Carlson, Steve Medrick, Susan Weber, Susie Jones, Beryl Hardigan, Emma Payne, Andrea Blackford, and Al Tiedemann. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have answered your call to follow Jesus to your heavenly kingdom, including Florence, Dennis, husband, beloved mother, give them your peace, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For what or who else shall we pray? Ask your prayers for Dick for his surgery this coming week. We give thanks for the truth to the resurrection and its flexibility. Let us pray the resurrection. Make us a blessing prayer. Our loving God, we ask your help as we finish the mission you have given us to build affordable housing. We ask your blessing upon those who will be living there. Help us to stay together throughout this pandemic and discern what you are calling us to do next. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with you. Through
Christ, that is continually offered to God, the sacrifice of praise. It is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name.
the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst forth from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy.
God has promised, you know, prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come and live spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Until we are together, none can physically partake.
host of technical and other difficulties that made us change the plan. Hopefully you're safe and warm and dry at home. And that you will tune back in on Zoom at 11 for our forum for appropriate Sunday school body play at 3. And just to make your day complete, sing some more. And I will be starting Compline tonight on Zoom at 5 o'clock. So join us there. I look for the other announcements, which will not change from Plan A to Plan B to Plan C throughout the week. Plan C. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.